All right, you zogging little crumpers. It is October. It is the Codex. It is about bleeding time. To keep up to date with everything at Knights at the Game Table, all you have to do is click subscribe and then hit that tiny little notification button next to it so every time we upload a new video, YouTube will be sure to let you know. So we got our hands on the Orc Codex a little bit early. Thank you so much, Games Workshop. And we are ready to take you through everything you are going to need to know about Orcs in 8th edition now they have got their own Codex. Now I'm going to take you through psychic powers, I'm going to take you through relics, I'm going to take you through clan traits, but I'm just going to give you a broad overview of the main changes and additions before we get into that kind of detail. So, short story is, most of the infantry has stayed pretty much the same, um, both points-wise and abilities-wise. It's basically as it was with a couple of minor tweaks. What's more interesting is everything else. All of the vehicles, I think pretty much without exception, and the walkers, they've all got a significant points drop. I think most people can agree they're pretty much overcosted. Um, eighth edition index saying was toys before boys, no, sorry, boys before toys, and um, that's that's what it was. You had all this cool stuff, but you couldn't put it on the table and still be effective. Now that's looking a lot sweeter. Some of these have come down. 25 30 percent in points cost the battle wagon's got a huge reduction the truck's got a nice chunk taken out of its cost death copters nice big points drop and that's fantastic because so many of us have them from assaults on the black reach and they just weren't particularly affordable now they are um gork and morkenauts both come down in cost that's great killer cans superb death dreads also down Stomper's got a tiny bit of a reduction and a bit of a boost. I think it's still pushing it, given it's got to compete with Imperial Knights. But by and large, things are looking way better for the whole Orc toy box. All right, first up, I'm going to take you through the clans. And you've probably seen quite a lot of this already previewed on uh, Games Workshop. You've been following that. But let me give you the broad stroke overview of all seven. And then I'll get into some of the nitty gritty detail I know you're dying for. So, the Goths have got a uh, bonus to uh, get extra close combat attacks if they roll a natural six. The bad moons are re-rolling ones for shooting. The snake bites have a six up feel no pain across the entire army. Evil sons are getting plus one on move, advance, and charge rolls, plus two on the move if they're a speed freaks unit, which is a new type of unit I'll be getting to in a second. They can also advance and fire their assault weapons without penalty. Death Skulls are my personal favourites this edition. They've got a six up in vulnerable save across the entire army, but that does not stop there. All of their infantry have objective secured, or uh, this is our Zogoff, the orc equivalent. And my absolute favourite part of their ability is that they are lucky blue gits, and they get to re-roll a hit, a wound, and a damage die for every unit every time it shoots or fights. This makes low model count units and single units extremely effective, including units that you buy in a group and deploy individually, like Death Dreads or the new Speed Freaks, or big individual units like the Gork and Morkonauts. Then we've got the Blood Axes. Their units all count as being in cover if they're 18 inches away from enemy units. And then additionally, they are able to either shoot or charge after they fall back. Finally, there are freebooters. Used to be exclusive to the flash gits. Now you can have an entire army of freebooters, and they can or cannot include Captain Badruck and the flash gits, depending on whether or not you want to. But their ability is that they get plus one to hit during a phase in which any friendly freebooter within 24 inches of you, has killed anything. This is going to be extremely effective for gun lines. It's also very nice in close combat. If you are able to take out a screening unit, everything else nearby is getting a plus one to hit, and that is going to be huge. Here we go, and mob rule, both persist from the index. Dagger, dagger, dagger is now army-wide, as has been widely previewed. You get an additional shooting attack on a natural roll of a six, and your sixes cannot miss. 
And finally, of course, objective secured for the Orcs, this is as Zogoff, personal favourite. A couple of units, um, particularly ones that you'd either have to kit bash or are uh, not currently available, have been dropped from the Codex. As per standard rules, you can still play the Index versions. And a couple of war gear options have dropped as well, but um, Index war gear options are still legal at time of recording, so that's still good. Um, there are new units in this codex, though. There is the Death Killer War Trike, which is an HQ character, particularly for Speed Freaks. And Speed Freaks is a new keyword available to a whole host of new racing type vehicles. All of these units have the Speed Freaks keyword, which allows you to buy them in groups of up to three, and then they deploy together within six inches of each other. Once they're deployed, they then act as individual units. The Custom Booster Blaster is more of an anti-infantry vehicle with its uh, quad burners and a couple of light attack weapons, although it does have a bit of additional firepower with its Strength 7 Rivet Cannon. The Shock Jump Dragster has a custom shock rifle, a couple of Strength 8 shots that hit on threes. Not entirely unlike your uh, Razorback, although this is not a transport, this is more of a uh, mobile shooting platform that has this built-in teleportation ability if it advances and hits a four up. Boom Dacker Snazwagon, another anti-infantry vehicle, what throws some burner bottles, as well as its uh, Assault 9 Mech Special at Strength 5 AP-2. The Megatrack Scrapjet, another anti-tank type unit with Strength 8 weaponry. And finally, that Rucker Truck Squig Buggy, the most versatile of all of these, with two different weapons, able to fire three different kinds of squig with three different kinds of damage profile. A couple of units have had some very small nerfs. It's not anything I'm upset about because I've got so many new toys and the army lacked versatility before and was pigeonholed into running a few overpowered units. But just to talk you through them, boys have got a very slight point increase, up one from the index. Storm boys also up one point from the index. Then uh, your mech guns, particularly your custom mega cannons, are significantly more expensive. They are also now Grot units. They're Gretchen, and anything that is entirely Gretchen cannot benefit from a clan culture. So neither your little Grot foot soldiers, your Gretchen, nor your custom Mega Cannon artillery are going to be able to benefit from the clan bonuses or from the stratagems. KMK has been a very powerful unit for uh, over a year now. I still think it's quite playable, but it's also going to have some competition from a lot of these other units and units are able to capitalize on stratagems and clan cultures in order to get extra bonuses. Psychic powers, we've got the three powers from the index and three new ones. There's the Crunch, which is an anti-horde mortal wound generating machine. There's the Raw and Mork, which is a leadership debuff. And my personal favorite, the Fists of Gork, which is giving plus two strength and plus two attacks to an orc character, letting you build your own smash war boss and lay in for some really heavy melee hits. There's a whole host of stratagems to take advantage of, and I'll take you through some of the big ones in a little bit of detail now. Um, Warphead is going to let you set up a weird boy with an extra psychic power and an extra manifest every turn. There's the, uh, an ability for an orc character to fight an extra time when it dies. Super powerful if you're buffing a character with the psychic powers just talking about, Fists of Gork. Then you've got a uh, force field projector, which lets you double the range of your custom force fields for a turn. I know that uh, deploying and your first turn movement's often quite annoying as the orc army, and this is going to give you something extra to help you make sure you get that coverage and survive your opponent's alpha strike. Teleporter lets you put any unit with power level 20 or less into a teleportarium style deployment and to come in as a deep striker nine inches away from an enemy model. This combos really well with one of my favorites, ramming speed, where you're getting a 3d6 charge plus dishing out some mortal wounds when you connect. There's also extra stick bombs, which lets you throw up to 10 grenades. Very powerful for units with tank buster bombs, including, of course, tank busters. And boys now can take a tank buster bomb per every 10 models. 
On top of that, you've got Grot Shields, giving you a practical use for your Gretchen, letting them take wounds in a bodyguard type style on a two up away from uh, friendly infantry. And finally, Unstoppable Green Tide, our own version of Tide of Traitors, redeploy a boys unit at full strength at the edge of the board and come storming in. Every clan has a clan specific stratagem. I'm gonna call out a few of my favorites right now. Bad Moons get to shoot twice, which is just amazing, combined with all of the other buffs and bonuses they can get. Um, the Freebooters get Kill Cruiser Broadside, which is uh, a bit like the Space Marine Orbital Bombardment. You can dish out mortal wounds in a wide area. And finally, Goths get Scar Boys. They can raise some of their boys units to be Strength 5, which is going to be huge against Toughness 4, Toughness 5, and even Toughness 8 targets. There's a whole bunch of relics, and a lot of them are weapon upgrades, which is very in theme for the orcs, and ways to boost up characters to get a little bit extra out of them. Um, there's one for the shooter, or uh, any combi shooter. There's one for the big chopper. There's one for the claw, which I think is going to be particularly impactful, because it turns any claw into basically a Gazgul Thracker's uh, super claw, and you could even have him and another character with that incredible flat three damage, no penalty to attack um, special weapon. There's also clan specific relics. Two of my favorites are the Bad Moons one, which gives you a huge extra range, massive amounts of shot, scorcher weapon, which can be attached to any shooter or any combi shooter and replace the shooter profile. So you can have a combi scorcher with both the scorcher element and this souped up relic scorcher. The snake bites relic is also very exciting. It is a huge one shot grenade that dishes out a massive amount of wounds and then jumps to another target and attacks that as well. Warlord traits abound. There's one for every one of the factions. There's also six generic ones and two of my favorites are brutal but cunning and cunning but brutal. Brutal but cunning lets you reroll your hit rolls with your warlord and gives you a damage bonus if you charged, were charged, or heroically intervene. Also, Cunning But Brutal allows you to redeploy 1d3 units at the start of the battle, which is a huge power for the armies that have it and really let you mess up your opponent as it is decided after you determine who is playing first, allowing you to optimize for that first or second turn and uh, capitalize on who wins that die roll. There you have it. I am so enthusiastic to play with the new Orc Codex. So many of the units that you just couldn't really use efficiently before have got big points drops, and in some cases, some upgrades. That combined with the uh, clan, uh, clan cultures and the relics and the stratagems, there's now so many options when you're choosing what to field. There's going to be a much more diverse army with so much more to choose from and so much more crazy fun to be having on the battlefield. One thing I forgot earlier that I wanted to sneak in, um, there's three different kinds of battle wagon now. Um, there's a standard one, which is much cheaper than it was. There's also one that's focused on charging into combat and gets bonuses for that. And there's another that's more of a gunboat that gets some bonuses for shooting. All very exciting and more versatile stuff. If you've enjoyed this video, please like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love to have you as part of the Knights of the Game Table family. We're putting out loads of content like this. You can see me playing Orc armies, using the brand new Codex rules and some of the new models every week right now on Knights of the Game Table until someone else manages to knock me off. And let me tell you, I'm doing quite well with the goodies in this Codex. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Knights at the Game Table.